have with me today, Pinod Subramanian, Chief Data and Product Development Officer for SIAPS, a company that empowers healthcare organization uh, to work in an active, transparent partnership, delivering complete patient insights to enhance patient care. Pinod, welcome to the Data Deep Dive. Thank you for having me and great to be here, Ron. Excellent. Uh, can you share a bit about your background and what led you to SIAPS? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, every interesting opportunity is at the intersection of my passion, the unmet need in front of me and the people I get to work with. The opportunity to leverage data and technology to advance cancer care through precision medicine was a compelling reason for me to take a role at SIAPS. Um, it was also um, an opportunity for me that allowed me to nurture my desire to help others while earning a living. There are very few professions, as you know, where you can touch the lives of others and make a difference in them uh, the way you can in healthcare industry. Um, I am an engineer by education. I have an MBA in uh, general management. Uh, early on in my professional career, I had the opportunity to work with data and technology that led me to developing and delivering innovative SaaS products in high tech and finance uh, industries. This was when uh, AI and data science was not quite commonly used terminologies. Uh, in any industry. I had an opportunity to work at Eastman Kodak that gave me access to the brightest minds uh, and insight into the healthcare industry in general, right? I was working with an innovative arm within the company focused on health imaging, uh, patient data and developing solutions that would uh, enable healthcare professionals to use patient data to make point of care decisions through computer software and technology. I mean, today, as you know, right, uh, fast forward, uh, the world's biggest problems are biggest opportunities, thanks to AI. Uh, for this to be impactful, from my experience, the place one starts matters, right? Um, the technology like AI is an intent amplifier. Uh, people first approach to uh, applying AI humanizes the work we all do. Uh, and that is one of the things that the pandemic has uh, taught us and reminded us uh, very nicely in the past three years. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that it, it's a, it's a, it's very well said when you say that it's a, it's an intent amplifier. It's a, it's a, it's a tool, right? Like it, it, it is yeah. just like saying a extremely fancy Microsoft Word or Excel. It's, it depends on what you do it with Microsoft Word. You can write uh, a, a bank heist letter, or you can write the next, uh, you know, Nobel winning, uh, you know. Uh, um, um, article or our publication or something like that so it's like it's really about what you're doing how you're doing and applying it for the greater good i think that's a, that's very well articulated um why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're working on this year and why is it important for healthcare yeah um see there are infinite possibilities um in terms of patient care uh with aggregated and harmonized data in healthcare data has become front and center and a big aspect of care delivery and care innovation, especially again, uh, thanks to the pandemic. Arming researchers and healthcare professionals with data and a deeper understanding of the patient's disease uh, leads to better care and outcomes. We've seen that. Uh, this enhances the application of precision medicine, right? And support regulatory submissions for drug approval. Precision medicine uh, for um, the uninitiated, right? Is a, in a way to apply medicine precisely to an individual rather than just having a general medication that goes or treatments to anybody. Transforming patient lives is at the core of all our offering and products at SIAPS, right? Our offering blends data intelligence, insights, analytics, and applying the, the insights in a way that is meaningful. Uh, because you, you can think about actionable insights, but actionability is different from actionable insights. And we think about how to make sure that the insights that are derived can actually be applied. Uh, and we see the results from that and then bring it back into our products. Now, before talking about what specifically we do at SIAPS, right? Just want to share a background on what we are as a company and our mission. SIAPS is a real world evidence company dedicated to improving outcomes for people with cancer and other serious diseases. SIAPS is about transforming patient experience through real world data and insights. Um, and we have been targeted uh, in our approach in leveraging technology to acquire curate data securely and use uh, technologies like NLP, machine learning, AI to harmonize and derive high value elements uh, for patients to give healthcare professionals the insights to make life-saving decisions faster, right? It's also about leveraging technology to give confidence and great experience to healthcare professionals because end of the day, care is delivered by healthcare professionals to patients. And by leveraging SIAPS products, we are um, looking to have the right insight in the hands of the right person 
in this case, healthcare professional at the right time, because it does matter. Great experience drives adoption, so we strongly believe in that. In terms of the specific areas, again, breaking it down further, right? we focus on having a platform that powers all our products. Uh, and in healthcare, the source of where you get the data and the methodology that you use in applying technology does matter because it builds credibility, right? Especially uh, in a healthcare setting, a physician or a researcher is going to want to understand, tell me how you got to this point, right? Explain. Uh, and that explainability, ability for the, the process, whether it's data or technology to be secure or does matter because it, it plays a big role in it. So we take that, translate that into research, publish our research. You can go to our website and we've shared all that there. Uh, and translate that into technology into our product. And it enables us to get to outcomes faster because now we don't have to constantly justify, explain, or clarify because we're building it based on trust. Uh, this enables us to get to that point I was making, right? Actionable insights and actionability of the insights um, based on our products faster. Now, the second use case is, um, again, like breaking it down so that way I don't get into jargons. Uh, there is a concept called early detection, right? Essentially, you know, if you're if you're going to have a disease, the belief is that there is enough data in the system for us to be able to identify that disease or diagnose the disease earlier. We call it early detection. So we are using machine learning to understand the data retrospectively uh, for the population in general, and then look at indications, patterns, uh, or trends to see how can we identify those ahead of time so that way. Healthcare in general can be proactive. Uh, our physicians and healthcare professionals can be proactive in their care for patients. And patients can be well informed ahead of time rather than just waiting for something to happen. Being proactive and preemptive in their care allows us to detect that ahead of time and take actions. Prevention is better than cure, right? So that's something that we want to translate through our products. The third use case we also focus on is by utilizing uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in the aspect of augmented intelligence to recognize um, healthcare disparities uh, and diagnosis specifically focused on cancer uh, and rare cancer and look at how we can improve that. Uh, and then the fourth one that we look at is in, in focusing on uh, biological insights, specifically in being more targeted uh, in deriving trials. Trials is the way in, in the market today where new drugs come into existence through uh, testing and also um, existing drugs are enhanced, right? I mean, Great example is our vaccine that came to the market. Typically, it would take seven years. You know, we were able to get a vaccine in 18 months, thanks to technology and advancement in these kind of trials. So these are things that we typically do uh, in terms of uh, you know value offering and outcomes to our product. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, I uh, you know I have a couple of anecdotes there. One, um, my wife also works in oncology, and uh, she had a she has a, a, a you know a decade of patient care experience. Uh, before moving on to like uh, uh, um, the pharmacology side. Uh, but, you know, one of the main conversations that we've always had, especially on the patient care side, is that everything seemed to be so cure focused, right? Like trying to get, it, it is so much easier to prevent something if you know that it's going to happen as opposed to once it's already there, damage has been done. It's really about trying to mitigate symptoms versus actually like trying to treat or, or maintain um, the, you know, the healthcare of an individual. So it's, it's really great that technology is allowing us to move faster, detect earlier, and uh, basically give people a chance for a longer, healthier life, really. Isn't that really what the, what, what the whole point is? Yeah, it is, Ron. And I think the, the point that you make, right, is highlighting the, the aspect of why technology is a differentiator right, in the, in the, especially in healthcare industry, I'll say, because we, we think about technology right in the form of symptoms and root causes, right? We're just going at the brass level. And technology allows us to actually think about root cause rather than addressing symptoms in healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's an enabler, but I think it, the way of thinking introduces in a healthcare system a way of advancing care very differently than what we could have done before. Again, right? I mean, I bring up the, the past three years while it was painful, it has allowed us to use technology and data very differently than how we had used uh, between uh, 2000, uh, I would say 2000 and 2019, right? Because this is this is the world we live in today. Everywhere we go, right? Whether it's healthcare or non-healthcare industry, everywhere data is predominant and everybody is talking about leveraging AI wherever applicable. That is the beauty of the world we live in, right? It's about fundamentally improving the human experience, whichever area it is. And, uh, you know, actually having a great time with that. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you're you're right, you're right on. The you know, the last 3 years have been painful. There's lots of things that was uh, uh, changed kind of immediately uh, and kind of forcefully in some cases, but there's a silver lining, right? And the advancement of technology and uh, distributed learning, distributed uh, compute, uh, you know, uh, uh, interconnectivity in some cases have, has increased significantly over geographies. Uh, here at Intuzi, uh, there are some people that, you know, work in Tel Aviv or in London or in New York or in Santa Barbara, California, where I'm arm based out of. And it's like as if we're, you know, just neighbors. Uh, it's, it's quite incredible. Now, with all of this data that's going everywhere and all of the learning that sits on top of this data, um, privacy is really important. So it's a, it's something that, uh, you know, there's laws in place, uh, there's HIPAA, uh, and even on the other side of technology, there's there's a lot of legislation coming out for uh, the regulation of data and how it's being shared. So it's at the forefront of everybody's mind. Tell me a little bit about how your technology allows the collaboration with patients' data on their behalf. How does that work? Yeah, and it's a very relevant question. Um, see, in today's business, um, Trust is built on two major components, right? One is ethics and another one is information security. Uh, when customers trust a service, a product or a brand, they look to it for guidance into the future. And that's something that we've seen consistently, right? Going beyond risk-based uh, tactics to strategies that are embedded in the platform and engineered to scale uh, is not just good to have or a, a marketing uh, uh, material, right? It's a necessity in the world we live in today, especially in product. Uh, vigilant business, as we say, right, is a resilient business in my view. Now, talking specifically about privacy in healthcare, the health data is some of the most personal information in a patient's life. When patients and healthcare professionals trust a service or a product, as I mentioned, they look to it for guidance during a care journey because there is a lot more appetite for somebody to want to use their own data, right, in their care journey. And same thing for the healthcare professionals because they have confidence in it. Patient needs to trust in the security and the privacy of their data as much as they need to trust uh, those who care for them. Mm -hmm. um, so in my experience, right, this can only lead to improved outcomes. Right? We've seen that, uh, again, we, through various studies that has happened in the past three years. Data and data platform in healthcare today right, plays a very foundational role in care delivery. At SIAPS, um, the way we focus on that is through our platform. We, we call it radar. Um, it includes the aspects of data privacy, it includes aspects of compliance, safeguards, including access management, data lifecycle management, data de-identification, service management aspects of it, including measurements and monitoring. We also include the flexibility to grow, adapt, and, and adjust to new regulatory requirements because compliance issues are fluid and they are changing, especially when you learn a lot about interactions with data across the globe, right? So, in our case, the impact of secure data analytics leveraging technology like AI and machine learning has been in our innovative journey, especially in the past five years, allowing us to progress from basic analytics to predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics in some cases, right, that are actionable, right, because the ability for you to go from insights to actionable insights to actionability in the insights, it is that specificity that you think about in terms of being clear about what are you doing, why are you doing, who is it focused on, and can you be very precise in that very moment? I mean, as, I mean you must know from, from your interaction with your family, right? A, a physician, right? Just in a good example, in a point of care setting, between seeing patients, they literally have five minutes. And in that five minutes, right, they probably have to take a break or even a, and a drink, right, before they uh, hydrate and before they meet their patients. They need to have enough information to be ready and prepped for the next, next patient visit. How can you be very precise, right, in giving that information? or a researcher, right, who's focusing on either early detection or even drug development, they need to think about how to get that information in a very precise way rather than searching for a very long time, right? So those are all things that we think about as we think about specificity, right, in what we do. Now, real-world data is something that I've mentioned a couple of times, right? It's a data that you gather outside a clinical trial, and there is significant use of that in, in research today, in patient care, and also in, in population health in general, right, in oncology. Now, the scale right, uh, in using real-world data requires accurate methods. Right? In healthcare specifically, there is a need to understand how are you specifically applying your methods uh, using technology to leverage the data. And there's a need to understand that because those data and the way it is being applied can actually influence a decision 
So you need to be comfortable and, and be confident that this indeed will allow us to get to the right outcomes in, 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 rather than having an, um, an negative impact or an, even an impact where it delays decisions, right? So we take a lot of time thinking through that. And the point is that the rich data combined with the application of increasingly um, artificial intelligence, augmented intelligence, machine learning, right? Produce better models. Once they are validated, it allows us to continuously improve the predictability, right? So that's a very important aspect. The last one, right? To gain deeper insights in every patient's journey, right? What we have believed in is the use of insights to advance care and save life comes from having very thoughtful approach in translating that into technology and using technology as an enabler. So that way data and technology can be very integral part of what you do in a care, right? So that way it is part of the workflow for everybody using it. That's something that we incorporate in our products as well. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, I, you know, we 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 covered a lot of ground uh, as far as you know, you know, privacy, kind of how things are applied. I uh, one of the things that I often talk to those in the data science field are is, is basically how do you, how is it that you take disparate silos of information coming from multiple different sources and then normalize it so that you can actually link them together and then have an actionable outcome. So at, at Intuzi, we do this for with geospatial data. A lot of things produce geospatial data. There is phones, beacons, Bluetooth, cars, air conditioners, Nest thermostats, all sorts of things produce geospatial data. And it's tying that together in a way that is actionable, useful, and that you can trust is one of the most difficult problems that when you're when you have the result, it almost looks so simple, but there's a lot of magic that happens in the background. I I, I call data science, uh, you know, like a, a form of mysticism, right? Like there's kind of like this like air of, uh, of 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 magic behind it, but really there's like very very specific methodologies. Can you talk a little bit about how you do that? How you normalize the data? Yeah, uh, spoken as a true expert, right? Uh, especially uh, in dealing with uh, technology that leverages data, Ron. I think. The interesting aspect, right, when you talk about uh, artificial intelligence and technologies like that, 80% uh, of the work is actually finding the right data that represents the target population that you are serving or that product is serving um, to be in, in a usable state, right? So that way the products can actually deliver value. Um, and, you know, healthcare industry is, is in a quite unique position, right, to improve the patient experience and outcomes and of course, reduce cost by leveraging data. Now, data is, is uh, not created equal. Um, and it's uh, it sits in different places. It's derived from multiple sources. It exists in multiple formats. Um, and I can keep going. Um, and the, the beauty of that is when we can improve the way data is collected, connected, analyzed, and consumed, uh, we have a great potential and opportunity right, in improving the lives of the community right, that we serve. Uh, this has been our experience, right? So what we typically do, um, um, we focus on getting the data, uh, putting the data in a place where we can normalize it, we can standardize it, and I'll talk about what that means, right, to us, and get it in a usable state so that way we can get to outcomes faster through technology uh, and partner with uh, experts, uh, clinicians, and researchers in thinking about possibilities and outcomes that we've not even imagined through a Socratic approach of asking questions. The challenges that we faced initially um, became a key learning for us to incorporate that in investing and, and deploying and building a platform, we call it radar again, in making sure that we continuously are adapting because once you have a platform approach, I think you can relate to it, then you're not constantly transforming your technology, right? You're, you're building on top of that. You're also engaging with different entities in the market to collaborate and co-create. Uh, and I think that is beautiful, right? Because then you can go beyond what we have originally imagined and you can create value very differently and you can accelerate that value delivery. That's something that uh, we saw in the past uh, three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a concept that we apply right, to, to the data. The data has to be findable. The data has to be accessible. The data has to be interoperable and reusable. We call it FAIR. It's something that you know, is well known in the industry. And uh, interoperability, normalization, and data management right, are all key aspects that enables the FAIR concept to be real. So interoperability is the ability for uh, computer systems to exchange and make sure that the data and information is flowing right, wherever it should flow in a secure way. Knowledge management uh, 
transforms the complexity, right, and inconsistency in the data into an easily understood information format. A good example is, I don't know if you know, right, aspirin uh, is known in two different ways, or actually even more. It can also be referred to as acetosol. It can also be referred to as acetyl salicylic acid, right? So these are all different ways of telling the same thing. When data comes in all this form, you have to decide how are you going to represent and refer to the same thing, aspirin. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third and the most important thing is normalization, right? Is a process of organizing your data. And you got to do that before you actually use it and use it in a way that your products are comfortable, right? In defining your use cases and representing that. So again, going back to the point, right? Data is not only derived from multiple sources, it's also in multiple formats, naming conventions, uh, designations, dates, times, uh, and normalizing and applying knowledge, right? Uh, on top of that is very critical and important in reducing ambiguity and making sure that the data becomes usable. So we also make it possible by aggregating the data on a continuous basis. We get the data on a daily, hourly basis, sometimes monthly, based on the data and the sources. Uh, and we interpret the data, we accurately represent the data internally within our platform, and we enable it in a way where it's a consistent format that our products can use. Now, once we apply that along with deep understanding of uh, the clinical knowledge, data science expertise, um, along with informatics on the health system side, uh, it enables us to look at our platform as a way to deliver value and continues to deliver value. So when the intent is to advance patient care, one of the things that we strongly believe in, Things and concepts like interoperability, normalization, knowledge management are enabling us to amplify our intent, right, in a very big way. Now, we also experiment the use of artificial intelligence and data normalization because it helps us to organize not only data that we get now, but also uh, clinically complex and highly contextual data types uh, that are common, right, in, in various uh, healthcare settings and uh, used by healthcare professionals to think about how does that help us in advancing life-saving work, right? So that's another aspect that we do that through our platform. I see, I feel so seen, so seen as you are, are explaining the difficulties of taking data from different places, different formats, all of a sudden it feels like that, uh, the magic that I'm seeing on the back end is, uh, is, is, is so universal right like whether you're not you're dealing with one data type or another now granted healthcare has its own challenges uh but the interop interoperability of data the formats it's something that we all deal with trying to get to that actionable piece of information right like that trying to bubble up that really important piece that someone needs to see right now as opposed to a month later right they're trying to trying to yeah, get that that's great action um Okay, so the next couple of questions are kind of intermingled a little bit. So one of the things that I wanted to ask about is how, you know, I was looking at your site and I saw that you guys use NLP, that's natural language processing and AI. How is it that you use that to capture unstru uh, oh, sorry, unstructured data? And why is that important? Because I and that's going to segue a little bit into uh, kind of a, a a fun question on a hot, on a hot topic that we see all over the news. But let's start let's start there. Tell me about your NLP. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting topic, and NLP has definitely um, exploded in a great way, right? In uh, in many industries. Um, but see, for us, the what NLP represents, right, is an ability. Um, to think about certain aspects of data that we would simply not be able to get um, in a very traditional uh, healthcare world, right? So data, as with any industry, right, in healthcare as well, data needs to closely represent the target population and the customer population that, you know, it is serving mm -hmm. uh, through products. Now, at SIAPS, right, we focus on a larger segment of the market, the community health systems. Now, in the community health system, right, especially focused on precision medicine, uh, I'll use an example, right, to talk about the point. Biomarkers play a very important role. What biomarker data means is, right, it's any data that contains biological information about an organism. Biomarkers allow for more personalized and precise approach to medicine by giving insight into biological processes um, happening within the patient, right? So that's why it is very important, especially when you want to personalize the care. Uh, they support accurate and timely diagnosis um, and more informed treatment choices along with the status of the disease. That's another reason why it's very important. But this biomarker data um, does not always come in a very structured way, right? It comes sometimes in uh, structured. In many times, it's available in unstructured or even semi-structured. Mm -hmm. When that happens, right, it's very important to extract that information without losing context. 
because data, right, as in any setting, is complex and has got a lot of context, right? In healthcare, I have a saying, right? Data is clinically complex and highly contextual, right? So how do you make sure that you don't lose the context? So we've been um, leveraging NLP for the past five years um, in looking at extracting this biomarker along with many other uh, critical data. Um, so that way it's accurate in um, representing the complexity and the context uh, and in the ability for us to preserve this context in applying against use cases, right? Because that's very useful because going back to the point I made, actionability uh, and uh, ability to have insights precisely at that moment in the hands of the right patient to make a decision comes by having all information for that particular patient uh, together. So this way we have access to structured data, unstructured data and semi-structured data. We have technology that can allow us to take elements from all these formats of data and allows us to put it in a way where we can en enable value to come through and deliver through our products, right? So that's something that we do. The other piece, right? Interestingly with NLP, this is the first foray into the entire data science for us. Uh, what we realized was when we extract these data from these semi-structured and unstructured uh, uh, documents, it's important for us to articulate the methods, right? Clearly the source of the data we understand. How do we do it is something that we have to articulate our methodology. What we did was we published a paper uh, on how we did the research. We got feedback. Based on the feedback, we adjusted, assessed the quality. We were able to get 95% accuracy, right, in what we were doing. And then we incorporated that into the platform to make this automatic. Mm -hmm. Now, the value of that is over the past three years, what we've seen is it continuously improves. And not only the improvement, we can now go beyond biomarker. We can go look at medication information. We can look at stage of cancer, site of the cancer, history of cancer. These are all elements and, and most valuable data that you can get, which is not in a, in a very clear structured form, right? So this enables us to address use cases, specifically things around uh, improvement, progression in a particular patient's uh, journey. More importantly, an ability for us to think about detection and diagnosis faster, right? And also uh, allowing us to engage in clinical trials very differently. So these are all things that we think about and we leverage uh, NLP. Now, we've also started leveraging machine learning because when you have sprawl of data, um, you once you are able to extract that, now you need to understand and analyze the data to identify any patterns, um, any trends in the data to see, is there anything that we missed uh, through a human eye? And we use machine learning to identify some of those and see whether rare cancer types, rare population, and things and trends that we may have potentially missed and see whether we can do that and we again uh, do publication of that and then incorporate that into a platform, right? So that's another aspect that we do. Um, but anyway, these are the ways that we uh, incorporate and leverage uh, machine learning and NLP, specifically when it comes to uh, unstructured data. Oh, that's, yeah, I mean, in, incredible. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think you guys, uh, you know, hit the nail on the head. It's really, it's really something where you, you, you take all this disparate data, you, try to uncover the pieces of information that are beyond the scope of the human eye and the human mind, like, you know, amount of features and, and things in, in both like neural networks and, and things of that nature, just are able to like bubble things up that are, are far beyond our, our mere mortal minds, uh, which brings me into the fun question. And I ask all of the people who are in data science this because it's such a hot topic, chat GPT, good, bad, or ugly thoughts. What are your applications in your field? What are the bo uh, the, the benefits, the detractions? I'll stop, you go. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the internet is buzzing with news about chat GPT, right? Whether it's uh, um, news in general or LinkedIn, Twitter, you always see something or the other. It's one of the most prominent AI power tools uh, and natural language processing model developed by OpenAI. And I see significant value, right, and potential in medical practice and education. Now the challenge, right, in my view, uh, again, this is my view of uh, mass adoption, is the same challenge of revolutionizing healthcare in US in general, right? I mean, it's a complicated system. It takes time. The building blocks are in place. Right? It will help innovators to unlock value on a day-to-day -day basis by leveraging um, something like chat GPT and personalize it right in specific use cases and slowly ramp it up right in my opinion the technology is very promising mm -hmm. right it's not without its own errors right and should still be approached judiciously but it's quite promising where it gives other avenues right to go um, address some of the complexity that we have in healthcare today 
right yeah. from an application point of view this is an area one of the applications i that i've been spending a lot of time right in looking at is uh, remote patient monitoring an area that you would be interested in right where um, there's a lot of especially in the past three years right there's a lot of investment and innovation that has happened in remote patient monitoring right in an increasingly popular way to improve patient outcomes while reducing expenses right because there are a lot of people who cannot just get out of the house right. and what i see chat gpt use right is in monitoring uh, patients right remotely by analyzing the data through wearables right sensors uh, any other monitoring devices or even through your phone um, and uh, in real time right gain insights into the patient's health status um, and it can be used to analyze the data provide alerts to healthcare providers so that way the right intervention can happen at the right time right i mean it's very important today um, and before you know you need an hospitalization the second area that i see right is in um, medication management right because see uh, once a, a patient sees a doctor virtually or physically, and once they prescribe a, a treatment, um, the treatment responsibility transfers to the patient, right? I mean, they are in control of their uh, treatment journey at that point in terms of making sure that it's managed and, you know, you're taking your medication. Now, what chat GPT can do, right, is in helping patients, um, you know, manage their medication, just remember that, um, uh, including reminders uh, in whatever way, dosage instructions, because Sometimes it can be uh, quite confusing and uh, understanding the side effects, right? These are all things that chat GPT can do today, right? Rather than going to Google and actually typing in your uh, question, this can be very interactive in helping patients, right? And everybody has got a smartphone today. And this is an application that I definitely see um, gaining uh, predominance, right, in the market. The other area, right, is the virtual assistance for telemedicine, right? Telemedicine is another one that grew rapidly in the past three years. And it can be used to develop and help patients schedule appointments, receive treatment, right, manage their health information. And as a result of more and more adoption of telemedicine, um, I can see that this can be a preferred uh, way of uh, people engaging with their providers, right, at the comfort of their homes. And the, the chat GPT that's powering virtual assistant uh, and telemedicine, right, can provide patients with a lot of guidance and support uh, in managing their health remotely, right? And, taking into account their comprehensive journey, their data, their interactions in the past, and uh, what they should be thinking about ahead, right? And that way, they are in control of their uh, uh, health and health, uh, yeah. so from my point of view. Oh, thank, thank you very much for that. Yeah, ChatGPT, in, in my opinion, just like what we, we started the conversation, uh, it's a tool, right? It's a, it's a force multiplier. It, it amplifies your ability to do the thing that you're, that you're going to do. Uh, I, I had it. Uh, in one iteration, uh, write a happy birthday song to my four-year-old niece. In the next iteration, on my next question to it, I had it uh, help start a article uh, about uh, geospatial marketing. And on the last thing, I had it produce a Python script to help uh, 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 go through some pieces of information. Three wildly different um, domains, and it was able to provide, you know, 80 to 85 percent of what I needed in order to get the thing the, to get the thing done but that last 15 percent of information comes from domain expertise that it's not quite not quite there yet I see the building blocks I see them being able to be stacked together but right now we're in like 1994 of Google search engine right like where it's going to become in the next 15 years is going to be revolutionary I can see the stair step all the way through and the applicability is going to be amazing um, well, I wanted to thank you for your time today. It's been super informative. If a viewer wanted to get in touch with you, how, what's the best way of engaging? Yeah, um, so my Twitter handle is at WinDNA. Uh, uh, I am on LinkedIn, um, and uh, you can reach me through any of these two channels. And for more information about SciApps, you can go to www.siapps.com. Fantastic. Well, that is a wrap. Join us again next week for another informative session on the Data Deep Dive.